Okay, well, let's get started here. Um, obviously, a big hello from our studio at Thorough Up Magazine. So I'm Ramya Lagami. I'm the editor-in-chief. And with me is uh, James Lee, who you've already heard. Um, James is our senior editor. So we are basically part of the uh, great team that uh, provides the content for Thorough Up Magazine, which has become the one of the leading like resources and publications in the world on the topic of family-owned businesses and multi-generational entrepreneurship. Yeah, and um, this whole podcast is your idea, not mine. I'm of just course, it's mine. Of there, course, so. like, that's so, the, this so is just like you just the, basically have to do what I tell you. That's I'm only all. saying that because <laughs> if this podcast fails, it's on you. And, oh yeah, you know, I, I'll I, take that pressure. You know, and right. you know, being part of a family business myself, yes. I'm quite used to the whole blaming and sure. blame game and stuff and the guilt. Yes. So like, you, you can't shock me, James. Yes. All right. Well, um, in that case, um, if, I don't know if everyone's aware, but Tharawa Magazine is in itself a family business. Yes, that's true. And you are a family member of that family business. That I am, yes. Yes, you are. It's a little known fact, actually. Yes. So what has to break in your head for you to say, I want to work with my family? <laughs> well, you have to uh, <laughs> be a little bit delusional and like you know have a uh, have a very um a a clear tendency to overestimate yourself I and then so. <laughs> basically you jump in so that's what happened to us um 7 years ago All when right. in wait um, so the 7 years ago that's that's which year is this so we're talking here end of 2008 yes. uh beginning of 2009 when we put out the first pilot issue of Thorough mm. magazine and um, we did this in response to what we felt was a huge gap in the market in the sense that we know that there are high quality resources out there, but I've always felt that what we could add to the, to the, to the knowledge pool was maybe a more global take on the topic that had already been tackled. So um, most cases and most examples were coming from the Western world at that stage. So what we felt was like, you know, we'd love to like um, bring some more cases of family businesses from other parts of the world to the table as well. So this is when we started Throw Up Magazine. And um, well, I mean, who's, who's, who's like idea was this? Well, I'd, <laughs> I want to say mine, but I'm going to have to say dad's. So okay. my, d- my father... Uh, uh, called me actually mm. in 2008 mm. and uh, what were you doing i was still at university and okay. i was like in the <laughs> middle of student life and just having yes. the time of my life and and the phone rings and dad goes um honey i had an idea um i want a magazine mm. and because i always say yes to my dad mm. like i just sort of got caught in the middle of things so uh before i knew it like i started um, putting together the first issue, the pilot issue, while I was mm. still doing my degree, and the moment I graduated, basically we published that. Okay, so your dad calls you up, says, "I want a magazine," and this yes, is the tragic day in which you decide. <laughs> I'm going to work with In which we family. decided, James, yes. to start a print magazine in yes. 2008. Yes. So I why mean, and how did this happen? <laughs> when we were starting to like see the financial crisis yes. just like hit the world in waves, mm. and we decided to go into print media, which, mm. um, you know, family businesses tend to be a little crazy, and I mm. think we made our point there quite, I guess so. quite valiantly. Yeah. Um, so the idea for us was um, that dad had at that point been working with like many hundreds of family businesses around the world mm-hmm. for, for, for about 30 years, uh, helping them when it came to educational needs and, and, um, and development needs and growth needs of their companies. And he's always been a very great advocate of like education being the way towards growth for any company. Mm-hmm. So education of people and like talent management. And um, he he started working with like uh, fast growth economies around the 80s and 90s, which was a really interesting time to be in places like, you know, the Middle East, Africa and Southeast Asia, because you could see these countries sort of like really coming to the surface at an mm. incredible speed. And at the forefront of that development were family businesses. And mm. this is a very little known fact, actually. It's like the these these growth spurs that you've seen and this massive like creation of employment and also this rise from like you know a lot of like poor people into middle class Mm. was like championed by family businesses Mm. of all sizes by the way so i'm not just talking about like you know the really large ones i'm talking about like all all types of uh, formats as we know like the sme sector is probably the most dense when it comes to family ownership right so um 
So that at that point, you obviously realized, like, I mean, many other people in the world as well, but just weren't talking about it that much, that family businesses really were a different ball game, were a different ball game from other corporations, mm-hmm. but also were a different ball game depending on where you were located and what kind of culture you were part of, mm-hmm. right? So you were, um, we were at that point very much dominated in terms of theories and literature on family business from everything that came from the West. Mm. So our whole argument was here, okay, so let's get started in creating some really good content and trying to include as many varied perspectives as possible and mm. just like get get people from all over the world to participate in the dialogue. And right. that's how Tharawa magazine was born. Mm. And uh, we tend to be like um, I guess relegated to the mm. Middle East because of our name, but really the reason why we chose this name is because Tarawat is actually a really beautiful word in Arabic, mm. uh, which means it means fortunes, mm. and fortunes not just like you know in a in a in a material sense, but like you know for the fortunes of life basically. Mm. And we feel like we really felt at the time it really encompassed very much what family businesses like try to stand for, do stand for, and, and like. Um, So that's why we call it Tharawat, and right. um, it's <laughs> it's been an interesting journey making mm. people like pronounce it properly at the right. same time. <laughs> no, I mean when I first saw it, I was like, no, I'm not even going to try. You well, actually, you, you didn't do like that badly actually compared know. to other people. You were doing quite well. <laughs> it was just shot in the dark, you know. 